I'm going to be honest with you, this used to scare me. I've only had a little while and I decided I was going to build a router table for it. You'll see a link to the build up there. Then I used it for a few months in the table. Everything was going well, but there's a few minor tweaks that I wanted to make. So I did. In this video, we're going to whiz through all of the little upgrades that make a good table great. Before we dive into actually adapting the router table, let's talk about personal safety while using it. it looks a bit daft, might feel it's a bit cumbersome, but when there's an exposed router bit spinning around, this gave me the confidence to really go for it and enjoy it. Push blocks and push sticks. Don't get your hands right next to the bits. You don't need to. If you have a good fence, which we're going to adapt to make even better, stick around for that, then these should be all you need. You can put featherboards on. We're going to put a track in that's going to work for those as well. Priceless. And finally, whatever you use for ear protection, this thing is loud. And if you put the dust extraction like I have onto it, again, see that later in the video, you're going to need some earplugs. All of these together mean you can focus on the job at hand and feel confident in what you're doing. Now for the build bits. Now the tabletop here from the very start should have been made from melamine. I made it from plywood. And so now we're reverse engineering a solution to the friction. And this is just very cheap, very thin sticky backed vinyl that hopefully is going to stop the pieces from snagging on the wood and just help everything slide that little bit better. Now, like anything you see me use in this video, I will leave a link to the pieces that I use, and that way you guys can decide if that's gonna be the best way for you to go. This is so easy to apply. Sticky on the back, take off the protective cover, and just lay it on your surface. Get rid of all the air bubbles, and then cut around anything that you don't want it on. I've only shown you me cover in half. It took about 10 minutes to do the whole thing, and then after that, I moved on to another thing that I didn't get right the first time. I put these drawers in thinking, it's gonna be easy to get them out. It's not. So handles, I made these little handles for a project a while back, and I find this right angle devout attachment to be absolutely priceless when you're getting into these tight corners. I just screwed through, pop some knobs on the front, make sure they're a little bit pretty. If you're gonna look at them a lot, and then that just makes the drawers much easier to get in and out. Make sure you put your spanner in there and a few of your push blocks because they're the sort of things you're just gonna lose. Speaking of making it pretty, I just put some edge banding around the outside, just some old off cuts of Sapili, and I stuck it on. Didn't do anything more special than that. Stuck it on, held it on with blue painter's tape, and yes, it's for prettiness, but also it does stop the edges of the plywood fraying. If you saw the first video, you'll see that I actually made my own mitre gauge that runs in the trench you can see across the front. Now, that didn't work. Didn't work well enough for what I wanted, so I just had to sink in a piece of T-Track. Matches the ones that I use for the fence at the back. I had to widen the gap, which I just did with the plunge base on my router, made it a bit wider, made it a bit deeper, and then the T-Track fit in there absolutely perfectly. Then, I admired the edges once I'd taken off the blue tape and gave them a little bit of a sand. Careful of the veneer that you put on if you've gone down this route because the vinyl will rip really, really easily. This is the mitre gauge that I use. Now this is from Axminster Tools. So for you guys in the UK, that is easy to pick up. You can use it on anything. You can use it on your bandsaw. It fits a standard T-bar. In all honesty, with what we're gonna to do to the fence later, you may not even need to spend the money on one of these, you might just be able to run the pieces. But I found, in the operation you're just seeing me doing here, sometimes the router bit would pull the piece towards it and you'd get a line that wasn't square. Anyway, on with the next one. This is one of the big ones, dust extraction. As you can see, I have got gaps all the way around my air intake here and it isn't close enough to the bit, so it wasn't getting all of the dust. Not to mention, you'll have seen it sticking up at a 45 degree angle, it was catching on everything. So I took the fence off, I gave it a bit of a chamfer underneath. This is just to stop the dust catching under it. I was having that problem as well. Now, I haven't shown you the process of me adapting this because it's very simple. I've just pushed the nozzle forwards and I've made a new housing for it at the back so it sticks out at a lower angle and it won't catch on things. 
The other adaption that I made that I'm quite proud of is that I've used this hose with a T-bar in it so that I can not only have extraction on the top, but also with a hole in the side of the table, I can attach it to the actual router itself. So I can not only take dust from source, I can also take any that falls down into the router itself. As you can see, it's really quite effective. The T-bar I will put down in the description because it is one of the hardest things for me to find and it was actually from an aquarium. Just a quick one. If you guys are enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. Now, back to the video. I really feel like I've left the best to last here and the fence itself needed a lot of adjustment because there's too much of a gap around where the router bit is. The pieces were basically falling and catching and then they, that was affecting the squareness of my cut. So first thing I did was set up these two extra fence pieces, just quarter inch plywood. Now what I've got here is a router bit that is the same size as the shaft of the bolt that I'm gonna show you in a minute that will hold them to the actual fence. I don't wanna go too far through, I just want to go through the wood and I'm marking here a point of start and a point of finish so that I don't cut the entire piece of wood in half because I'm just gonna to want to attach it to the fence and slide it sideways. You'll notice that it looks like I do this all in one pass. That is just video editing at its best. What I actually did was go halfway through on the first pass and then I came back and hogged out the rest all the way through on the second pass. I'm only really showing you the second pass here. What I will say is turn the router off before you even touch this piece of wood to take it off. This will just ensure that your hands are nowhere near the spinning router bit itself. And then I did that for both pieces and the second bit I popped into the router is a wider bit that will only be made for half of the depth of the cut. And now I can raise these up just slightly so they don't foul across the surface of my table and they will be attached to the fence itself with bolts that I can tighten and loosen so I can slide these guides in and out which will mean that I have ultimate adjustability so that the only gap is just around the spinning router bit. Now I've been looking at these router tables that are for sale in many of the larger stores across not just the UK and I have to say it, sh it looks as if I'm putting a lot of bits on this and a lot of extra pieces. There's not a lot of expense gone into this. And some of these tables sell for in excess of 200, 300 pounds per table without the router. And this has been made purely out of scraps and some really cheap pieces that you can buy very easily on Amazon. This final adjustment takes it to what I would call perfection for what it is. And it just stops the pieces from falling backwards into where your dust extraction is. Quick check for square, and we can call this one done. And so there it is. A few small tweaks here and there, and suddenly what was a good router table, really good for a beginner, is now fantastic. A couple of you might notice that I've just put some lacquer around the edges there. It really brings out the colour of the Sapili. Do you have to do that? No. But you're going to look at this every day. Well, if you're lucky enough to be in your workshop every day, you're going to look at this every day. But why not make it a little bit nicer? It certainly brings out the handles, which I think look amazing. Now, as with everything, there's a few subtle details that are really, really important to take into account here. Firstly, it would have been better from the start to put a hard-wearing Formica-style surface on the top. The vinyl that we've stuck on is really just a second-best measure. It's not as thick as I'd want it to be, it slips okay, but two things that I've made mistakes with since having it on there. One, do not put hot drinks down there. You will get circles on it, it will melt it. Two, and I don't know why anybody, unless they're filming themselves, would ever have to do this, but I did put a clamp on it to try and film the process of routing and it did indent the wood enough to rip the vinyl surface. It's not gonna affect my use of it because it's right out on this corner, but something to bear in mind. If you haven't seen the original build video and seen how easy this is to do, I'll put a link to it up there. If you want to make some more things that are gonna help your workshop, these storage drawers are amazing and so easy, as easy as this. I'll see you over there.